Hello and welcome to this Nice Touch tutorial. I'm Reno from My Mountains, and today I'm going to show you what Nice Touch is about and pretty much everything you need to know about it. So, if you've just um, got the asset and I've pressed play and you don't see the, the controls here, um, and I'm mentioning that because that's the question I get asked the most, um, you might want to change your build settings to Android. Uh, we'll see later on that there are other ways uh, you can force one mode or the other, but uh, if, you, if you're in a hurry, you know, just uh, switch your build target to something that's mobile, so Android or iPhone, and um, there you go, you'll see your, your controls. So to start things off, uh, maybe we can start by having a look at the contents of the asset. So uh, if you've downloaded the asset, you probably should have something like that. Uh, first of all, you'll see there's a readme. Uh, I encourage you to have a look at it. Really useful and contains uh, all the information you need. Uh, then moving on, we'll have the common folders uh, that contains uh, some resources, the UI camera prefab that you'll find in most scenes, some scripts. Um, most of them come from the MM Tools library. It's something that I um, use in most of my projects. Here you have only a, a selection uh, which is relevant to these controls. Uh, some helper stuff, event management, uh, the actual controls. So you'll find the axis, uh, swipe zones, uh, buttons, stuff like that. Some helpers that handle, you know, different operations and. Uh, most of them, or maybe uh, some of them, are not used in Nice Touch, but you know, just don't worry, leave them there. Uh, then we have something that handles the state machines for all the buttons, and a few sprites, and uh, most importantly, you'll find the sprite sheet for uh, the actual controls. And then moving on, we have two demos one which is called the uh, Cube Silender Sphere, which is the one right here. And if we press play, you'll see that it's uh, some, I wouldn't even call it a game, but uh, uh, some stuff where you can control these three objects uh, using different controls and like that, and you can make them jump. Uh, so really it's not a game, but just an example of something that you can do and uh, it will give you an example uh, if you're creating a game of how to bind uh, controls to objects. And uh, moving on, we have the nice touch test scene, uh, which is a much more uh, debug mode scene. As you can see, uh, we have some information here that displays the current position of the joystick, the current values. Uh, if I swipe, you'll see that in the console uh, a swipe has been detected and uh, it displays you know the values uh, for the swipe if i press buttons uh, you'll have a complete debug log uh, you see that i can uh, i pressed the x value for the first time and if i release it uh, it gets released we also have in here uh, the button expressed button a button b button y uh, button rt here we have a repositionable joystick, uh, different joysticks, well, basically everything that's in uh, um, nice touch is here. So um, let's have a look at how we can add nice touch into your game. Uh, so to do that, we're going to open the cube cell and the sphere demo scene. Here we are. So. Um, as you can see, we have already, we already have a bunch of stuff here. Um, all that would be our game, all right, or your game. Uh, we have an input manager that currently handles. If we open it, you will see that it currently handles uh, non-mobile movement. If I uh, switch to a PC target and close this and press play. As you can see, my mobile controls have disappeared, and if I use my keyboard arrows, I'm moving my my cube uh, around. And I'm not sure what key is supposed to make it jump, but uh, as you can see, it's uh, this input manager that will handle uh, non-mobile movement. If I switch back to Android, though, 
uh, we'll see how it works for mobile. So uh, as I was saying, this is our game. We have this offline, uh, non-mobile input manager. We have this main camera. We have our level, which contains light, ground, borders. You, that's your level, uh, and some characters: a sphere, a cube, a cylinder. All right. Uh, they are really basic. Uh, you know, basic stuff: rigid body, collider, a simple character movement controller that will handle. Um, uh, movement on both axes and a jump and then we have a UI camera that's where we will put our mobile controls because we want them displayed on the screen so uh, it needs to contain a canvas and inside this canvas you'll need an MM touch controls uh, object uh, usually I make them a canvas group which uh, allows me to control their opacity uh, like this all right, and it will need also an MM touch control script. Moving on, we have a more mountains logo that you can get rid of, and a nice touch logo that you can also get rid of. And that's all you need. So all you need is uh, this object. It's also a prefab that you'll find here, and you can drag, you know, another uh, UI camera into the scene or uh, two, but uh, I wouldn't recommend having more than one. Um, so. Uh, the mm touch controls it's a canvas group and it also has an mm touch control script attached to it uh, this will allow you to turn uh, the whole thing on or off depending on your build target if you check this checkbox here uh, it will Im implement automobile detection automobile detection means that uh, if i'm on a pc or xbox or playstation whatever uh, some sort of non-mobile target it will turn uh, all its content off and if I'm on Android or iPhone it will turn the contents on alternatively if I don't want to uh, spend all my time switching uh, build targets I can also decide that I force one mode or the other uh, so if I force desktop and press play whatever my build target uh, my controls will be disabled and if I force mobile, press play, whatever my build target, the controls will be on. Once you've added uh, the UI camera to your scene or, you know, um, assembled it by copy pasting from this one, uh, you can, of course, reposition stuff. This is done super easily. There's nothing really specific to nice touch here. Uh, you just select your objects and move them around. Uh, you can move the buttons, you can, you know, uh, remove some. Maybe I don't want an A button, but I want a B button and I want it here. Uh, you can also, you know, change stuff here. Uh, there are really, really good Unity tutorials about the UI system in Unity. I won't cover that here, uh, but know that everything you'll find there will also apply here. Um, and that that's pretty much it um, so now all that's left to do is bind these controls to our controllers so uh, let's say I want to move my to make my my blue sphere jump it has a character movement script uh, and all I need to do is select my for example my X button and as you can see here, it has an MM touch button script. Uh, this will allow me to bind actions, methods to some events. For example, um, when the button gets pressed for the first time, when it gets released, so and um, when it's pressed, while it's pressed. So that's something that will be called uh, at update every time while the button is pressed. Uh, let's say I want to make my character jump. That's the current binding uh, when the button is pressed for the first time. So how would I do that? Uh, let's say I select my, my cube instead of my sphere. I drag it into here. That's the target. And then I just have to select a function. In this case, I'm going to select jump. Jump being uh, a method from my character movement here. Uh, if I open it, you'll see that I have... Uh, some move methods and a jump one. I'm just going to call the jump one. So now if I press play and uh, press the X button, I have my uh, cube jumping. 
So uh, it's really as simple as that. Um, the more uh, complex thing you'll have to do probably is bind uh, a movement uh, to uh, the joystick. So um, here, for example, it's bound to uh, the sphere. It's exactly the same principle. You just drag your sphere here and then you select a method. In this case, as you can see, uh, this one takes as a parameter a vector2, so you'll have to build in your controller or your manager uh, something that looks like this. As you can see here, my move method uh, takes into parameter uh, a vector2. That's how I get the information from the input, uh, as opposed to a simple method like that. Like that. And if I press play, uh, I was changing this one, and as you can see, I'm moving my sphere. Uh, one thing to note, though, is that if I were to bind uh, this other joystick to my sphere, uh, this would cause a, a conflict, because um, this one... Oh, well, let's, let's, you know, just uh, press play. Uh, as you can see, when I move that one, nothing happens, and when I move that one, uh, the sphere moves and both are linked to the sphere what happens is that um, during each update this one will send if I'm only moving that one uh, well if I'm moving that one this one is not moving and it's sending zero zero as a value uh, while this one is sending maybe one zero when I'm here but uh, it's overridden by that one so make sure you only have one joystick bound to one character uh, at least one method uh, at a time, otherwise it won't work. That's uh, just the kind of off uh, conflicts I get asked about on a regular basis, so um, I think it was worth mentioning. And yeah, you've seen how to bind the button to an action, how to bind an axis to an action, and that's really everything there is to know about Nice Touch. Uh, it's a really simple, really uh, as minimalistic as it can be. Uh, but uh, I think it will allow you to create uh, the mobile controls you want for your game. I know I'm using it in a lot of, uh, of productions. Um, really works well. Uh, you don't spend too much time in setup and stuff. I hope you learned something new today and I'll see you next time. Bye.